Welcome to Heartbreaking Talks channel. Let's go dive into my stories. The story is titled I found out at 2 am on New Year's Day that my wife was having an affair. She kept going for another 8 months. I am a 28 year old male. I had my first girlfriend when I was 21 and she was the first person I slept with. I loved her and we got engaged, married and moved in together over a 6.5 year relationship. I started getting suspicious of her and one of her workmates who was extremely clingy towards her. There were many red flags which I ignored as this woman was the love of my life and my wife. Why would she do anything so bad? But the suspicions kept building as more and more red flags appeared. I confronted her about these things, like how he and she were messaging constantly. I saw many messages from him to her with rows of heart images. She would always favor going places with him over me, even when I specifically asked if we, me and her, could go together. She took him to a bird park that I loved to go to. She had him over for one night when I was away, and the bed sheets were in the washing machine when I got home. I had enough on New Year's when she was purposefully being distant from me, like I was a bad guy or I had done something wrong. I took her phone and found her messages with him that night, confessing to each other how much they loved each other. Obviously, I felt destroyed, but full of me attempted to keep our relationship going. I found out they had been sexting each other a few weeks afterwards as well, and after a massive argument, she promised to change. Fool me, they continued their thing until August where I found them out again. Before then, there had been instances where she was purposefully distant to me, and lo and behold, it was because she was doing things with him. Suspicion crept up again as she went to the gym three to four times a week, but only had one gym wear in the wash by the end of it, and she never was tired or did her fitness change. I demanded a divorce when I found out that she had named a star after him for his birthday, which was just a week or so before mine. I had enough. She lied to friends and family about what had happened, stating that we were just getting distant and wanted different things. I retaliated by throwing everything on an FB post, including her confessions for the other guy, the naming the star purchase, and photos of them out on trips which I had no clue of. I will admit not my best moment, probably not fair either. After the divorce, I said I never wanted to hear or speak to her again. This was around two years ago from the time of posting, and in that time, she has messaged me twice. Both times I have completely ignored, but I keep the evidence of what she did safe, just in case she tries anything. Honestly, for my first real relationship, it was a rollercoaster. Four months later, four days before Christmas, I lost my job and my house and moved back into my mother's. Please, drop a like if you enjoy the content. Let's continue. The story is titled X Cheated With Our Pastor. I was married to my first wife for about nine and a half years when I joined the local sheriff's office as a deputy. I was attending the academy, so I was at home more often than usual, as classes were only from 8 to 5 during the week. I finished the academy and returned to shift work at the local jail, working night shift 12-hour shifts. Two months later, I got a weird feeling that something wasn't right. My wife kept spending time with the pastor's wife, sewing and crafting. I was off duty and had to change my sleep schedule. I'd go to bed with my wife but couldn't sleep. I went to the restroom and saw a text on her phone at midnight. It was from the pastor. Thinking it must have been an emergency, I picked it up and read it. It read good night, my love. I was floored and tried to find other texts, but she had deleted them. If it was innocent, the older texts would have been saved. I woke her up at 1 am to ask what was going on. She basically said it must be a typo and why I was snooping. She turned tables on me and got defensive, kicked me out of our bedroom for a month and a half. I thought I had screwed up. I was so stressed I lost 35 pounds in a month, couldn't eat or sleep, a real basket case. I got us counseling recommended by the pastor. She had me apologizing to him for even thinking that anything was going on between them. She wouldn't talk to the counselor except for quoting Bible verses. She tried to play the holier than thou. After a month and a half of this, I saw her diary out unguarded. She had been so guarded of it in her phone since it all hit the fan. I read how she and the pastor were in love and had to sneak around to be together and that his wife knew. I calmly went to her and said, you were right for hiding your diary from me, I just read it. Her jaw hit the floor and she suddenly got all apologetic. She said, I never meant it to go this far. I never meant to hurt you. Call him now, I want to talk to him. She called and I demanded to meet him in the morning. We met at a local fast food restaurant and I walked in with my phone in my pocket on record. I recorded our conversation legal where I live and he admitted to the inappropriate relationship. He was such a hypocrite. He regularly preached against infidelity and how he wouldn't counsel a woman alone due to people thinking the wrong thing. I let him speak enough to give me evidence. 
I was livid. The hardest thing I ever had to do was to try even harder to keep my marriage together, but I'm pretty sure the cheating continued. I moved out to keep my job safe so there wouldn't be any way she could lie and try to start a domestic violence issue and I'd lose my job. People at church asked her where I was for weeks, she lied and said I was working. They contacted me and I wouldn't lie for them. It took a while, but it all came out and he left the church he founded 25 years ago and started working in fast food in his mid-50s. It took years for me to finally get over it, but it messed me up as far as trusting people, especially preachers. I'm posting this not to be malicious, just sharing for others to read and hoping it helps in some way for others going through the same. The next story is titled I, 21F, believe my boyfriend, 32M, of one year is emotionally cheating on me and I don't know how to talk to him about it. My boyfriend, we'll call him Rick, and I started dating about a year ago, a few months after he had ended a relationship with a girl we'll call Jolene. We live in a small town, so I also knew Jolene previously, and my boyfriend and I are pretty good friends with some of her extended family. Jolene has a young daughter who absolutely loved Rick when they were together. However, when they broke up, they had a falling out for various reasons and cut contact. Rick would sometimes mention Jolene's problems with alcohol and drugs, issues parenting, and the fact that she had left him for someone she had previously had a very toxic relationship with. He would mention that he missed her daughter sometimes, but to my understanding, he had no interest in being associated with Jolene at all. Now, about two months ago, he brought up to me that Jolene and he had talked. I don't recall if it was over text or phone call, and she had apologized to him and told him she was clean and turning her life around. I remarked that it was admirable of her to own up and apologize for hurting him and also to quit drugs and drinking. I didn't think much else of it. A few days later, he said that Jolene's daughter had been asking about him and she wanted to know if we could meet somewhere just to visit. Seeing as I was with him and her daughter was with her, I had no problem with it. It was later in the evening, so we only met up for about a half an hour and parted ways again. My boyfriend didn't mention anything else to me about Jolene until about two weeks later when I was at my parents grabbing some things before going to his place. He texted and said he was going to Jolene's aunt's place, a close friend of ours, to do a small last-minute job for her so he wouldn't be home for a bit. I asked if I could stop by there on my way and he hummed and hawed a bit before saying sure. When I got to Jolene's aunt's place, I was surprised to see that Jolene was there with her daughter. I know nothing fishy went on because her aunt and cousins would never let it fly, but it was just interesting to me that he had obviously been talking to her to know she would be there and decided to rush over while she was there to do the job. This is when my gut starts to tell me that there might be something more going on. In the last few weeks, Rick has been periodically dropping Jolene's name more and more. For example, the other day he said she had asked him to take a look at her quad, so we met her out at her grandparents' place where it was stored and he got it running for her. There have also been multiple times where I see a notification on his phone for a Snapchat or a text from her, but I didn't want to sound paranoid by asking about it. Today, Rick went uptown for a few minutes and left his phone on the table, and I couldn't help but look at it. He doesn't have a password on his phone, so I opened up his Snapchat and saw that they have a 9-day streak, which means they have been talking on Snapchat for at least 9 days consecutively. I then opened his messages with her, and though I didn't have much time to look, there were messages from yesterday of him saying that he was thinking about her. He missed her, and one message basically asks her out to dinner tonight while I happen to be at my parents' place as well as a message from a few days ago where she says something to the effect of her needing a house husband and him asking if he could apply. I took screenshots of the messages and sent them to myself, then deleted the screenshots and texts to myself. I know that none of this proves that he has physically cheated and I don't believe he has. Some people may not consider this emotional cheating, but I do, and I do think that it may escalate to physical cheating. The part that I'm not sure about is how to start a conversation with him, ask him about his feelings for her, etc do I tell him I went through his phone. I feel like it was wrong of me to do it now, but I can't unsee what I read. I really love him and I don't want to throw away an otherwise good relationship over some texts, but I also absolutely cannot tolerate being cheated on. A user in the comments said that is cheating in my book. I'm a 35-year-old male, just letting you in on some information. The only reason I would consider dating a 20-year-old would be for sex. No offense. It sounds like Rick is very much emotionally attached to Jolene and her daughter, so he gets to flirt and hang around her and her kid and get some young trim while still trying to get back with his ex. This is an opportunity to take a huge step forward and not sell yourself short. I would say, hey, peek your phone, and it looks like you got a 9-day streak going with your ex. Why not make it 10?
expletive over at her place. I hate this stuff, but I have been the victim of this manipulation before. Oh, we were just friends, or I didn't think you'd mind. No, expletive that. If he cared about your feelings, he wouldn't have done that. You're worth a lot. Don't offer people a discount. The next story is titled Myself, 31F, is well off. She is constantly buying expensive gifts for me, 25M, even when I ask her not to. For Christmas, she wants to pay off my student loans as her present, however, we have only been dating for barely a year. Background. I have been dating a girl, let's call her Trish, for less than a year. We met at my friend's New Year's party. I will be honest, I was not really looking for a long-term relationship at first, as I had just got out of one. However, those thoughts rapidly disappeared. She is gorgeous, smart, and a dork like me. The fact that she gets genuinely happy to see me means a lot. We have similar hobbies and both work in tech. She very much has the dominant personality that makes it very hard for me to refuse her, but she isn't abusive or anything like that. There is also a fairly big age gap, but I really like her. Trish is well off. She was one of the first employees at a tech company that ended up being bought out by a larger one. I don't really know how wealthy she is, but I honestly don't care. While she does oftentimes spend a lot of money, several times she has told me money isn't an issue for her. She has also very much told me that she knows what she is doing regarding money. Monday was my birthday, and she spent probably somewhere over 1k on gifts for me. The thing is, they were all things that, at one point, I made a comment about or something. She bought me a watch that I vaguely remember looking at back in February, and I said it was a nice watch. So, there is thought there. I tried to get her to return the stuff, saying this is way too much, but she 100% refused. For her birthday back in July, I made her favorite food, and she seemed genuinely happy with this and specifically forbade me from spending money on her. On the other hand, I am poor. I got a master's in a useless subject and currently work as an entry-level software developer. I have a ton of debt and frankly, my finances were a mess. She knows how much of a mess they were because she sat down with me one day and basically untangled the mess and taught me proper budgeting, investing, etc. Last night, we were talking about Christmas and our plans. Eventually, the topic turned to gifts and I basically begged Trish not to spend anything on me. I explained that I couldn't get her anything on the same level as what she bought me. She made a big deal and told me she didn't want anything like that and that she just wanted her gift to be spending Christmas with me. On the other hand, Trish said that her gift for me is that she's going to pay off all my debt so I can stop worrying about it. At first, I thought she was joking, but she's completely serious. Personally, I said sure because that's pretty awesome, but I feel like it's insane and I genuinely don't understand. We've been dating less than a year and everyone I've talked to has either said she's joking or lying, but I know she isn't, which makes me all the more confused. I'm looking for advice because I really just don't know how to respond or handle this type of thing at all. I do genuinely love spending time with her and even if she never paid a cent, she's still easily the best person I've ever dated. Can someone help me, please? A user in the comments said, look, accept this money if you can see yourself with this woman for the long haul. Don't do it if you can't because if you can't see a future together, it can change the way you see the relationship and make you build up resentment. This woman is in love with you and in my opinion, the way you write makes it sound like you're in love with her. If so, congratulations, not because of the money, because money comes and goes and only pops up in your mind when you don't have enough of it, but because you've found love, which is much harder to find and makes you feel great in the best of times and better in the worst of times. Update. After reading all the advice I got from you guys, I agreed to let Trish pay off my student loans. I've also kind of just given in and agreed that I have no say in how she spends her money on me. However, I explained that I will never be anywhere near as successful as her, so I can never really reciprocate gifts on her level. She was completely fine with this. I also agreed that come February, I'm going to move in with her, since she's asked me a fair number of times about this. So, I jokingly said that paying off my debt could be her Christmas present, and she got extremely happy. I will be honest, I still feel somewhat uncomfortable and uncertain about everything. I still feel that there must be some sort of catch or something. I met her friends, and apparently, her last two relationships all fell apart within a year, and it apparently came down to her somewhat forceful dominant personality. Personally, I like part of her, so it doesn't bother me. Anyways, thanks, guys, I think I made the right choice. I will see where this goes. The next story is titled Brother Cheated on Wife of Two Years, Ran Off with Side Piece. My brother is making all the wrong decisions. 
He married a nice young girl from India who didn't want to stay in the US, and now she is stuck here in the States away from everyone she knows because of the lockdown. She found out her husband, my brother, has been cheating with a co-worker through looking at my brother's text messages when he wasn't looking. When the wife confronted the side piece, the other woman was proud to have done what she did. The husband then runs off after being confronted about the cheating. Now he blocked my family from his social media and has now even removed wife's photos from said social media accounts for every extended family member to see that something is up. To top it all off, in these two years, my brother has been domestically and psychologically abusing his wife. I tried to encourage a separation, but she claimed it will all go away eventually. It died down, yeah, but I'm not sure of all the stories and hearsay. After the first incident, I lost every ounce of respect I had for him. Now he's sunk lower than a crap hole. I am purely ashamed of him, but I'm even more, her as, pissed off at the side piece for lusting after a married man and convincing my brother to cut off his friends and his family, who have been trying to get him psychological help. Oh boy, this drama is still developing as my brother is living with the other woman, and since he decided to cut off his wife, he is now financially unstable because the wife was the money maker of the two. He mooched off of the wife's money, she bought everything he has. From what I hear, the other girl isn't exactly living in luxury. Is he truly in love? I do not know or care. He is dead to me. I'm helping the wife find a new apartment and helping her deal with paperwork. She will have a better life without this comeback. Side note. I stole my brother's true love, his gaming system. He has to see me in order to get it back. Thank you for your attention. Drop a like and subscribe to support my channel. See you soon.